So let's talk at greater length or intricacy into significant figures and really start to get uh, you know more into the into the nitty gritty. So just um, to review what we talked about earlier here, you know the number. of significant figures you know is dependent on the tool um, that is doing the measurement A measurement includes this idea of known digits, um, and an approximation. Digit, right? The approximation. is always uh, the last digit of the number. So we had a measurement, say, of 85.2 centimeters. This value has three significant figures. We have two of those significant figures that are known. And then we have that last digit, which is the approximation. So, so all digits in this in the sense are um, significant. Step two, or you know, idea two, would be um, you know the placement of the decimal point. does not affect the number of significant figures. Since the measurement is still the measurement. So if we use our example above, 85 to centimeters would be the same as 8.52 decimeters, which would be the same as 852 millimeters. These are all same measurement, right? We're just just moving the decimal the decimal place around. Right? All have three significant figures. So we can move the decimal point around, shift from one unit to another, or shift from you know one type of scientific notation to another. Because we could say 85.2 centimeters is the same as 
852 times 10 to the minus 1 centimeters, or we could say 8.52 times 10 to the first centimeters. Again, moving a decimal point around um, using scientific notation, um, but still the same thing goes. So, so we always have the same number of sig figs based on that actual measurement. Zeros is the next topic within sig figs, and that's these are the troublesome, you know, these are the troublesome crew of of the bunch. So, there's a couple different rules within zeros. Um, so if there is a decimal spot, then all zeros to the right side of the measurement count as significant. So if I had an example of 85.200, there are five significant figures here. But if I had a value of 49,000, there's only two significant figures. There's no decimal spot, while above, we do have a decimal. If I do one more example here of 56,100 decimal, this would still be five significant figures. We have the decimal spot. So the zeros to the right um, count. So Zero to the right side of the measurement count if there is that decimal spot. So those are certain zeros that do count. Zeros in the middle of a measurement always count. So if I have 56,015, there's five significant figures. So zeros in the middle always count. And lastly, C, zeros in the beginning or left part of the measurement never count. So these are numbers or, or values that come, you know, before.
if I have 0 0.0856, this is only three significant figures. These zeros at the beginning do not count in terms of that measurement because we could just move the decimal spot um, around. So that's the deal with zeros. Um, zeros at the uh, beginning never count. Zeros in the middle always count. And zeros at the end or the right of the number, well, you got to be really careful um, and, and keep an eye on that decimal spot. As far as expressing, you know, very large values, you know, or very small values, we use scientific notation. or Greek prefixes. Though I think scientific notation is a little bit um, easier. So if you have 0 We have zero point zero 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 nine three four. That's the same as nine point three four times ten to the negative eighth grams. All of these are zeros to the right. I'm sorry, to the left. And as a result of that, they don't count. Here we have our known digits. And the four is the approximation. So we started on the left. with something that has three significant figures and our number on the right also has three significant figures. I could also say that that is the same value as 93.4, or I'm sorry, uh, 934 I could also say that's the same as 934 micrograms as well, right? Again, still has that notion of three significant figures uh, still. Or we can go the, you know, the opposite uh, direction in terms of a very large number. So 
So let's say we have this very large volume of liters. We would tend to want to write it in terms of that idea of scientific uh, notation. That's 5.3 times 10 to the ninth liters. All those zeros uh, to the right don't count. because there's no decimal. And so we have our known digit as well as the approximation. So just two significant figures. And so since we have two with the measurement, We would expect the same for, you know, just using it in terms of scientific notation or using the idea of Greek prefixes, which would be um, 5.3 uh, giga liters. So the measurement is the measurement, and the tool that's defining or defining the measurement um, really sets the the level of significant figures or the accuracy of the process. Now that we have significant figures done, um, and we still need to kind of keep reinforcing that that idea of significant figures. Now let's get into you know the math involving significant figures. And the first thing we want to start with is the idea of rounding. Um, to be honest, technically, this definition of rounding isn't quite correct. Um, depends on, on how, how analytical you want to get here, but we're going to keep rounding um, with the same definition as the textbook. Uh, and it's really just the common definition that, that I think we're all really, really used to. Um, first off, you never want to round during a calculation. Always use all the digits and going forward in the math. So that's the first thing. We never want to round till till the very end. So at the end of a calculation is when you determine how many sig figs or significant figures um, that the answer should have. If, uh, you know, the digit or if the value you know, if that digit is um, the next in line is five or greater then the approximation digit increases by one. If that digit is four or less, 
then the approximation digit remains the same. So as an example, we can say we have a value of 46.3248. And we basically want to round to four sig figs. So if we go to our value, we are talking about curtailing the number right here between the two and the four. Notice that our four, that's right beside that approximation digit, is less than five. So we have here our, basically our digits that we want to get rid of at this point which are to, to the right of that approximation uh, digit. And so here would be our known digits, the 46.3, and here is the approximation. So we go to that digit that's next in line, past that approximation digit, we see that it's less than five, and so our answer will be 46.32. Or let's say we have a value of 0 0.003462. And we want to round this to two sig figs. Again, if we go to that, where we would want to cut the number, we're cutting it between the four and the six. Notice our six is greater than five. We have our known digit, which is the three. And we have our approximation, which is the 4. And that gives us value of 0 0.0035. So we have our two sig figs, the 3 and the 5. And remember, zeros to the left don't count, namely those. So that's rounding. Um, we always want to wait till the very end to determine if we're going to round or not. So once we start to get into mathematics, we always want to go through with the math with, with the whole value that we have, the entire value, and then at the very end of the process then decide whether we want to round or not. Now let's get into multiplication and division. Because that's the easiest one, and that's the one students tend on to latch on um, the most. Um, but realize that there are two different sets of, of, of definitions for sig figs. So for multiplication and division, the final answer will only have the same number of significant figures as your measurement that contains the least number. So
So let's say we have an example here of 0 0.0125 times 620 times 2.536 all divided by 0 0.4523. And if I plug that into my calculator, I get a value like 43.4523. Four, five, three, five, and it probably goes on a little bit after that. But if I look at all the values that I have here, here I have three sig figs for the first measurement. The 620 has two. The 2.536 has four. And then our bottom number also has four sig figs. So the one with the least is going to define the process. So we should be curtailing this at two sig figs. Notice that our four that's right adjacent to it is less than five, so we don't round. And our final answer then is four D three. So that is multiplication and division, right? It's the easiest one. You just figure out which number has the least number of sig figs, and then you apply that to um, the number of sig figs that should be in the answer. So our answer has the same number of sig figs as the measurement that contains the least number of sig figs. So that's multiplication and division. The harder one for students is addition and subtraction. And with addition and subtraction, the answer can only be as accurate as the least accurate measurement. That's different in dealing with number of sig figs. It's just looking at accuracy of, of the measurement. So let's say we have an example of you know, 24.625 grams plus 8.63 grams plus 18.738 grams. And we're adding this up, we would get a value of 51.99 three grams. If we look at the accuracy, we're accurate to the one thousandths place for both the first mass and the third mass. But we are only accurate to the 100th place. So our answer must have the same accuracy. So our answer would be then 51.99 grams. 
Notice that the 8.63 grams only has three significant figures, but that is not how addition and subtraction is done. It goes by accuracy and by that placeholder here of the 100th place. So that's why our answer needs to be accurate to that 100th place. So that's addition and subtraction as well as then multiplication and division. The last would be, you know, what about combination or combinations of math? So what you want to do is basically start with your parentheses first, you know, follow normal order of reaction, or I'm sorry, normal order of the process. Do not round, but you want to track where significant figures uh, where, where check where significant figures should be to help with the final answer. So if we look at an example of this, Let's say we have 140.01. Uh, we're going to add that to 26.987. Going to multiply that sum by 4.7681, and then divide that product by 20.34. We just want to be stepwise and start with step one, right, which is the parentheses where we have this, this addition occurring. So if we do that addition, I get 166.997. So I'm just doing that math and then putting in the rest of the, 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 the numbers that are still there. But what I'm going to do is track where that number should be in terms of significant figures. And it should be right there at that 166.99. Notice that our 140.01 is good to the 100s place. Our 26.987 is good to the 1000s place. So we want to mark where we want to, you know, where sig figs should be based off the one calculation. So it's not that we're done. It's, you know, it's not anything like that. We're, we're just tracking, you know, from one calculation to the next within this large calculation as to where, where those sig figs should be. So the second step would be now, right, the multiplication. So if I multiply those two together, I get 796. Point two five eight three nine five seven. Still divide it by that twenty point three four. So here I'm multiplying something that has five sig figs, which would be the four point seven six eight one, times something else that also should just have five sig figs because we should curtail 
the 166.997 as 166.99. We don't want to do that. We want to go through with all the value throughout the calculation. We don't want to round or curtail sig figs until the very end. But what we want to do is track where that number should be. And so we should have it right here. And then we can finally do the last calculation part, which would be the division. And we end up with a value of 39.147413751. I think the number still keeps going. But here we can then curtail it again. Where should we be? Well, we're dividing. We have our top numerator is five sig figs. Our bottom number is four. So we should be curtailing our number there. And so our answer should be then 39.15. Notice that my seven here is greater then five, and that means that we need to round up. But we only wait to do that till the very end. So there's a little bit more complicated of a sig fig calculation. Just track the sig figs from one calc part to the other, um, and then at the very end, um, you'll know exactly where you should be for sig figs.